Collateral Global is an ambition, an attempt to gather up all of the evidence that relates to the impact of the policy measures that have been put in place over the last 18 months or so to deal with the pandemic. Our particular expertise is in synthesising the evidence. It's very easy to construct an argument on either side by cherry picking bits of the evidence base. I can take some poor quality evidence, I can take an outcome and I can spin it in a way. What we will do is take a single question and look at it at the totality of the evidence, synthesise that, explain the uncertainties and explain the impact. That would include measuring the significant harms that have come from some of these lockdown measures, but also benefits too. Right? Nothing is ever truly good or bad. And so our ambition is to gather up the evidence in a way to say how good and how bad it's been. Right from the start, I was very exercised by the potential harm that we were about to inflict worldwide by going into lockdown and recommending lockdowns as a means of dealing with the problem that we had, which was the spread of a novel virus. Straight away it seemed that what we were looking at was a fly sitting on a pane of glass and that we were about to take a hammer to um, get rid of the fly. And I was very worried that we would shatter the glass. If there's one thing I've learned, if you're unsure or uncertain, the basic principle is to first do no harm. And that's what we do in medicine, that's what we should do in research, and that's what we should do when we enact policy on a sort of national scale. One sort of underappreciated aspect of the lockdowns has been this sort of public health norm that required everyone to agree that it was necessary. Even academics who had reservations about them were, there, there's this enormous amount of pressure to say, look, this is the right thing to do. Because otherwise you would undermine the ability of public health to have a unified message. That's antithetical to how, how, how science ought to function. Right? Science functions by debate, by discussion, by, by contending with the evidence, uh, which, which is often ambiguous, and trying to reach interpretations. So for me personally, I've been involved with many aspects of, of this, the debate around lockdowns in, in, in the context of COVID. Uh, and what I've seen is a, an absolutely extraordinary pressure put to, to if, if you disagreed with the consensus, to stay silent. One of the great things about Collateral Global is that it gives us a way to start opening that discussion up again. We've been told for years, just one day of school can be um, a, an enormous impact for your child. So we've had children out of school for, for months on end with very, very impoverished education. Um, these effects are life limiting. Uh, we, we don't know because it's an experiment that we've not tried before, but my hypothesis would be that we are going to feel these effects for many years to come and it's going to take significant resources to undo the damage that we have done. If you were to rank all of the main determinants of life expectancy, let's leave happiness and well-being to one side, let's say we don't even care about that, we care about life expectancies. You'd have loneliness right at the top of the list. It's up there with you know, smoking. Diet and exercise, they're way down the bottom. So even if you only cared about life expectancies, you would care about loneliness. What we've done for the best part of a year or more is force people to be lonely. Now how that hasn't been factored into the calculations of the impact of the policy measures is beyond me, right? Okay, maybe not in the first couple of weeks or months, but we're a long way into this now. Why hasn't there been really rigorous attempts to think about how what we're doing might affect some of the outcomes that we ostensibly care about? We know that in the global south, um, there are millions of children who are going to be plunged into poverty and famine from the actions that we have taken. In general, it's the disadvantaged and the poor globally who will be most affected by the, 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 the policy decisions that we have taken. What we've developed is a somewhat cartoonish view of what's going on. There's the virus and then there's us, and we've got to get rid of the virus. The truth is that the virus exists, that this epidemic exists in the context of an, a sort of broader ecology of the other coronaviruses, all other respiratory viruses, and then we, as the hosts of these viruses, exist within economic systems, 
society, um, you know, a broader kind of network of human beings of international cooperation. Um, and once you interfere with this large complex system of which this virus and the spread of it is one part, then we do risk disrupting this very broad and, and wide network that sustains human life as we know it. When we drop the pebble of policy into the pond, there are significant ripple effects that could turn into tidal waves. How ambitious are you about what you hope Glacial Global can achieve? Well, I hope to change the world with it, I think. I mean, I think, um, and I think we will, because I think if, if, um, if we don't talk about these things, it's, you know, we, we, we've, done, we've just been through this very traumatic period in, in world history where we've essentially st tried to stop the world to address one disease. Uh, it's very easy to say, say okay, well, it was just a necessary thing we did, let's just move on and pretend as if there aren't these secondary knock-on consequences because we all want to think that we did the right thing. But the problem with that is uh, if, we, if we do that, one, we won't be able to address what those knock-on consequences are as efficiently. If we don't know they're happening as, as a consequence of the lockdown, then we wouldn't be able to divert resources to help, help uh, ameliorate the situation. The other thing is the next time there's a pandemic, we'll jump back on to, to lockdown as if it were the only thing to do again with being blind to the harms of them. With Collateral Global we can address both of those things. When the next pandemic hits, we can, we'll have a much better understanding what policies like lockdown do. So we can decide more rationally whether it's the right thing to do as opposed to jumping in it as if it were the only possible thing to do. And then we can also start to address some of the harms directly with good policies to, for instance, ameliorate the, the, the schooling loss, uh, catch up on cancer screening and treatment, uh, address food insecurity throughout the world, do all these sort of, uh, sort of basic policies that you wouldn't think to do unless you knew that the harms of the lockdown had happened. To me, it, it, there's not much more I can do with my time that's more valuable.